Pearls of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, narrated that the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Indeed, Allah is kind and loves kindness in all matters. Sahih al-Bukhari, Volume 9, Kitabul Istitaba, Al-Murtaddin, Wal-Muanadeen, Book of Obliging the Apostates, and the repentance of those who refuse the truth obstinately. Chapter 4, Hadith number 6927. Pearls of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated that Allah's Messenger, peace be upon him, said, The strong man is not one who wrestles well, but the strong man is one who controls himself when he is in a fit of rage. Sahih al-Bukhari, Volume 8, Kitabul Adab, Book of Manners, Chapter 76, Hadith Number 6114. Oh, you who believe, give charity for the pleasure of Allah. The pleasure of Allah. Oh, you who believe, read the Quran every night of Ramadan. Night of Ramadan. Welcome, O oh Ramadan. It is Ramadan. It is Ramadan. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and humanity, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. May the peace, mercy, and blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala be on all of you. Welcome to the show, Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakia. I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers, and today we will be discussing the topic acts recommended and discouraged during the fasting. Dr. Zakir, Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Assalam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. How are you today? Alhamdulillah, Allah Barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Masha, Alhamdulillah. This topic, again, such an important one. In fact, every 32 that we will do, inshallah, will be very, very important. Inshallah. Could you, Dr. Zakir, to start the proceedings, simply tell our viewers what are the recommended acts during Ramadan? Alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salam. Ala rasulillah wa ala ali wa sahibi ajmeen. Amma abad. Awuzu billahi minash shaitanin rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Rabbi shuali sadri wa yisalli amri. Wa ahlul ugdat min lisani yafqa kawli. Normally, all the acts that are recommended during the normal days are also recommended during the month of Ramadan except those acts which break the fast. But there are specific acts which have been recommended by a prophet, especially during the month of Ramadan, and some acts are encouraged more during the month of Ramadan. And there are many of them. Uh, I'll try and list as many as I can. The first is having suhoor. We should not neglect the suhoor. Number two is having suhoor as late as possible, just before the break of dawn. Third is having and early iftar, as early as possible, just after sunset. The fourth is having dates and water when you break the fast. Fifth is saying the recommended duas after you break the fast. And the sixth is that when you break the fast, it is preferable you invite other people, especially the poor people. And these six, inshallah, we'll be discussing tomorrow. The other thing which I recommend with the Prophet is Number one, that we should do as many good deeds as possible during the month of Ramadan. Number two, we should be more generous in the month of Ramadan. Number three, that if someone tries to provoke you, you should not get angry. But you should say, I'm fasting, I'm fasting. Number four, we should use the sevakh, that the toothstick. Number five, that if possible, should perform umrah during the month of Ramadan. Number six, 
should try and acquire as much knowledge as possible. Read the Quran along with the translation. We have to read the Hadith. These are the Islamic books. Number seven. We have to attend as many Islamic programs as possible, lectures, seminars, to increase the Islamic knowledge. Number eight. We should watch Islamic programs, maybe on the video, watch Islamic cassettes, hear Islamic audio tapes of scholars, so that we increase in our knowledge. Number nine. We have to be happy throughout the day. We should not look gloomy. Number ten. We should husn and salute with other people. Number eleven. We should be extra good to our family. Number twelve. We should do tafakkur. That means ponder and think on it. And number thirteen is that we should see to it that we try and forgive people's faults. And there are other acts which the Prophet also recommended, which inshallah will be dealing in detail in the other days. For example, the Prophet said that we should specially be careful that all our compulsory salah we should offer in congregation as far as possible in the mosque. Number two is we should offer as much as sunnah salah, as much as nawafil. Number three, we should supplicate as much as possible to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Number four, we should ask for forgiveness because this is the month of forgiveness. Number five, we should recite as much Quran as possible. Number six, we should offer tarawih. Number seven, we should specially in the last ten days we should do kiamul lail. Number eight is we should do etikaf in the last ten days as possible. And number nine, we should give zakat if we have not given. Number ten is that. We should do our own self-improvement as much as possible. Number eleven, seeking Allah's forgiveness. Number twelve is Isra of the other Muslim brothers, and number thirteen is Dawa to the non-Muslims. So these, in short, are the three to topics which I have listed, which are specially recommended in the month of Ramadan. Subhanallah, a lot of topics that we've got to get through, Doctor Zakir, and I hope, and I trust in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. That we can get as much benefit out to the viewers and to ourselves first sure. and foremost as, as well. Sure. So, Dr. Zakir, the first topic we need to discuss today is how can one understand generosity in terms of Ramadan? What are the acts of generosity that you would recommend a Muslim to be involved in? A person should always be generous throughout his life, but during Ramadan, he should be more generous. It should reach its peak. And there are various ways a person can be generous. For example, one thing which normally people think about generosity is helping people with money. But that is not the only act of generosity. That is one of the acts of generosity: helping someone with your money. Mm -hmm. The other act of generosity is that if you share your knowledge, if you guide someone to Islam, someone or to Dawa of the non-Muslims, even this is generosity. You help him with your knowledge. The other act of generosity is maybe you may help them with your physical strength in doing some work or maybe lifting something. Even that's the act of generosity. Any good deed is an act of generosity. For example, you may be in a position, being in that position, the job you are doing, you may be able to help someone in fulfilling his need. Even that's an act of generosity. So all these come under the acts of generosity. And the hadith of a prophet, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari. Word number one in the book of Revelation, Hadith number five, it is said that Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he was the most generous of all the people, and during the month of Ramadan, his generosity used to reach the peak. And Archangel Gabriel used to visit him during the month of Ramadan and used to rehearse the Quran. And it is said that Prophet Muhammad peace be upon him, he was more generous than. The strong, uncontrollable wind. He was the peak of generosity. For the beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "It's mentioned in the Tafsir Midi, Hadith number three two three three, where it is said that there will be rooms in paradise where you can see inside the room from the outside, and you can see the outside from inside. And these rooms will be prepared for those people who are generous." And who help the poor people, those who fast regularly, and those who pray at night. So these are special rooms prepared for those people in paradise. Further, there's a hadith 
صحیح حدیث منشن ان ابن ماجا حدیث نمبر 1746 میرا بلاوٹ پافر مصر صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم سیڈ دیٹ اینی پرسن ہو فیڈ دا پرسن ہو ایس فاسٹڈ ہی ویل گیٹ دا ریوارڈ آف دا پرسن ہو ہی ایس فیڈ ہو ایس بین فاسٹنگ ویڈاوٹ ڈیمنیشنگ دا ریوارڈ آف دا پرسن ہو ایس فاسٹنگ دیفور ایس شوز دیٹ وی شوڈ انکاریج پیپل ہو فیڈ ادر پیپل آل دیز آر ایکس آف جنرسٹی سبحان اللہ آئی ہوپ ہم پرائی ہو وی کن بی ایس جنرسٹس رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وسلم ان دس منت انشاءاللہ سی ڈاکٹر زاکیہ the month of forgiveness ramadan is upon us and allah has recommended us to be forgiving of one another during this month can you explain more about that this is the month of forgiveness and since we ask for forgiveness from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah has also recommended that we human beings we should forgive others and there are several verses in the quran which have explained this in detail if read surah al-imran chapter number 3 was the manner that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you should forgive Allah likes those who do good deeds that means those who forgive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes them Allah says in surah araf chapter number 7 verse number 199 that hold to forgiveness and enjoin what is right and go away from those who are ignorant furthermore Allah says in surah nur chapter number 24 verse number 22 Allah says that and you should forgive Wouldn't you want that Allah should forgive you? Allah is of forgiving and most merciful. Allah says in Surah Taqabun, chapter number 64, verse number 14, that amongst your wives and children, there are some who are your enemies. But it will be better if you forgive them. You all look their fault and you cover up their fault. Allah is of forgiving and most merciful. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is encouraging the Muslims and the believers that it is better that you forgive as many people as possible and Allah will forgive you and we have the best examples in the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we have the example in the life of prophet Yusuf alayhi salam where we know prophet Yusuf peace be upon him that his step brothers they had planned against him and they wanted to kill him but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves him and later on he is made the governor of Egypt And when finally all the brothers are at his mercy, Allah says that he said, it's mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Yusuf, chapter number 12, verse number 92. He says that, let not anyone reproach you. And that means, let not there be reproach cast on you. And Allah is the one to forgive. He is merciful. That means Yusuf alayhi salam, he forgives all his brothers. And he says Allah is merciful. We have the best example of forgiveness in the last and final messenger of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during Fatih Mecca. When the mushriks, when the pagans of Mecca, they killed many of the relatives, that killed his uncle, that killed many of the sahabas. But when finally he had victory over them, he forgave all of them. And Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Azab, chapter number 33, verse number 21, that verily in the Prophet you have the most beautiful pattern of conduct. And Allah says in Surah Fusilat, chapter number 41, verse number 34, Allah says that repel evil with good. And you may never know, the person in whose heart is enemy and hatred against you, you will find that he will become an intimate friend of yours. That means repel evil with what is good. That is the best. And Allah repeats the message in Surah Shura, chapter number 42, verse number 37. He speaks about those people that means the people of paradise those are the people who avoid shameful deeds and avoid major sins and when they get angry they forgive so there are various verses in the Quran which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us guidance to human beings that we should forgive the other people Jazakallah khair Dr. Zakia for that reminder regarding forgiving our dear brothers and sisters in Islam Inshallah We'll see you soon after this short break. It is Ramadan. Oh my Lord, make me brave, brave, brave. And make my path easy, easy. In taza khudao me bada sab se watan hai. Jo peran uska hai wo mazhab ka kafan. This is nationalism, racism. Hamare jaisa koi nahi. 
Then he says, Jo karega intiyaz rang o khun mid jayega. So whosoever will resort to the distinction of color and blood will perish. Turki khargahe ho ya arabi wala gar. Though he may be a majestic Turk or a blue-blooded Arab. This is the law of God. You discriminate on grounds of race, language, color or riches, you will perish. Come and talk to me like that. Everybody talks about peace. Tony Blair talks about peace. George Bush talks about peace. We're fighting for peace. We're blowing for peace. We're doing this for peace. We want peace. Everyone wants peace. Abdul Rahim Green. That Islam is the only way to establish true peace. Some people say that Bhagwan Rajnish, he's Almighty God. Hitler, number one terrorist of human history, he has incinerated six million Jews. We find on the international media, there is virulent propaganda about Islam. The first people who were involved in suicide bombing were the Tamil Tigers. There was no case of suicide bombing at all in Iraq. Dr. Zakir Naik. My job is to present truth to the world. It is Ramadan. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam and humanity, Assalamu alaikum. Welcome back to the show, Ramadan, a date with Dr. Zakir. I'm your host, Yusuf Chambers, and today we are discussing the topic acts recommended and discouraged whilst fasting. Next question relates to anger. Dr. Zaki, regarding anger management in the month of Ramadan, people are fasting during the month of Ramadan, they're getting angry. Is there any excuse for a person getting angry in the month of Ramadan? Is it a valid excuse indeed for them to say, if we are fasting, we're entitled to get angry? In fact, it is opposite. That a person, while fasting, he should not get angry. Because Allah says in the Quran in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 183, that fasting has been prescribed to you as it was prescribed to people who came before you so that you may learn self-restraint. It says, La lakum tattakun, so that you may learn self-control. So in fact, if you are fasting, all the more reason you should not get angry. It is the opposite. It can't be a valid excuse that because I am hungry, because I am tired, I can get angry. It is the opposite. And a beloved Prophet Muhammad said, just mentioned the Sahih Hadith of Sahih Bukhari, volume number 3, in the book of fasting, Hadith number 1904. Our beloved Prophet said that fasting is a shield and you should not speak obscenely. You should not yell at anyone else. And if someone abuses you or someone tries to provoke you or someone tries to make you angry, you should say, I am fasting, I am fasting. And the same message is repeated also in Sahih Bukhari, Volume number 3, in the book of fasting, hadith number 1894. My beloved Prophet said that someone provokes you or makes you angry, say, I am fasting, I am fasting. It further repeated even in Sahih Muslim, several places. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, Volume number 8, in the book of manners, hadith number 6114, our beloved Prophet said that the strong person is not one who defeats another person with his strength. The stronger person is not one who overcomes another with his strength, but the stronger person is one who, when someone makes him angry, he forgives him. He does not get angry. So, actually, fasting shows us a way how to control ourselves, and as you rightly said, it's somewhat like management on how to control your anger. SubhanAllah. Well, if we can control our anger whilst we're fasting, we can do it any time, inshallah. inshallah. Dr. Zakir, regarding something which is very beloved, that is doing, performing the Umrah during the month of Ramadan. Any particular advice regarding that action during Ramadan? As far as the advantage of doing Umrah in the month of Ramadan, our Prophet encouraged it. I told the Sahabas, he encouraged the Sahabas that you should do Umrah during the month of Ramadan. And our Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 3, in the book Umrah, Hadith number 172, the Prophet said that anyone who does Umrah in the month of Ramadan 
it is equivalent to Hajj. That means if you perform Umrah in the month of Ramadan, any day of Ramadan, whether starting, middle, or end, it is equivalent to performing Hajj. Mm, well, that's uh, it's a very good reason, of course, to do Umrah during this blessed month. Dr. Zakir, many people have the misconception that using the siwak during the fast in Ramadan is discouraged. Could you just clarify this point, please? There are many people who think that using siwak while you are fasting is discouraged. It is based on the hadith. The same hadith I quoted earlier of Sahih Bukhari, volume 3, in the book of fasting. Hadith number 1904 and 1894. Prophet Muhammad said that by Allah, in whose hand is my soul. The breath of a person who fasts is sweeter to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala than the scent of musk. Now based on this people think that if you use sivakh, the breath, the bad breath that normally comes when a person who fasts will not be there. So Allah will not enjoy the breath. And based on this, they think it is discouraged. In fact, we should realize that when a person is using the sivakh to stick, it does not stop the bad breath which normally comes when a person fasts. Well, when you use the tooth stick, the sivak, it normally massages the gums. And if there are any food particles in between the teeth, like how you use a toothbrush, it is somewhat similar to that. The bad breath of fasting comes from the stomach, because no food enters the stomach, and that's how it comes. So no way does it contradict that. And furthermore, beloved Prophet Muhammad says, it's mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume number 2, hadith number 887. That the beloved Prophet said that if it wasn't too difficult for my Ummah, I would have made it compulsory to use the Sevaq before every prayer. How Wudu is compulsory? So the Prophet said, if it wouldn't have been difficult for the Ummah, it would have made it compulsory to use the Sevaq every time before prayer. And that means it is a recommended act. And if it wasn't good for fasting, you would have mentioned it. Like how we mentioned for excessive sniffing of water, Hadith of Abu Dawud. Point number two, hadith number 2360, where our beloved Prophet said that sniff water excessively through your nose while doing ablution, except while fasting. That means sniffing water excessively is good, but don't do it while fasting because there are dangers that will go into the throat and enter the stomach. So here too, if it was a disadvantage, the Prophet has said that I would have told my ummah to use the sawak except while fasting. So based on this, using sawak in the sunnah, it is a recommended act, it is mustahab, and you should do it, and inshallah it will get rewards. Dr. Zakir, how can a person seek knowledge during the blessed month of Ramadan? Seeking knowledge is a very good act, especially in the month of Ramadan. There are various ways a person can seek knowledge, besides reciting the Quran, which is recommended thing during Ramadan. A person should even read the translation of the Quran. He should read the book of Hadith. And as far as possible, he should read the books which are Sahih, the books of authentic Hadith. The best is the Qutb al-Sitta, which you can read that, there's nothing like it, that is Bukhari, Muslim, Sunan Tirmidhi, Sunan Abu Dawood, Sunan Nisai, Ibn Majah. These Qutb al-Sitta are the best. As time doesn't permit, at least we should read the Sahih books of Hadith, that is the Sahih Bukhari and Sahih Muslim. If time doesn't permit, at least we should read the summarized version of Sahih Muslim or the summarized version of Sahih Bukhari or at least read the Muttafiq alaik the hadith which are common between Bukhari and Muslim he can read the book of the Seerah of the Prophet and the best book on the Seerah of the Prophet in English language is Raik al Maktoum the seal nectar which speaks about the biography of the Prophet the other book on the Seerah of the Prophet is the book of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam by Taya al Ismail even that's a good book a person can acquire knowledge by attending programs. He can go to an Islamic organization, attend lectures, attend seminars. This will increase his knowledge. He can watch video cassettes of Islamic lectures, of Islamic programs. He can hear audio cassettes. He can go on the internet, go to Islamic websites, go to authentic Islamic websites. So these are ways in which a person can acquire knowledge. And this is a good way of spending your time in the month of Ramadan, acquiring knowledge, and surely you will be benefited and you will get a great deal of reward. Inshallah. Inshallah. All of those books, of course, you've mentioned are available in various languages around the world, so there's not really much excuse for somebody not to pick them up during the blessed month of Ramadan. Dr. Zakir, what is the term Husna Suluk 
mean and what does it mean to be good to your family? During the month of Ramadan, normally people have another excuse that because they're fasting, they seem to be tired, they seem to be as though they have been drawn. Prophet advised that you should look cheerful and happy. You should not look to be sad. You should be cheerful and happy. And we should especially be good to your family. And you should give more time to your family so that they get reward along with you. As far as doing Husni Suluk with the other people, this is the month where, besides the normal months, in this month you should be extra good to the people, to your neighbors, to your friends, also to your relatives, do good deeds, forgive the faults, be happy with them, be cheerful. And we should also do Tafakkur, that we think and plan our day in Ramadan so that we get the maximum reward. May Allah make it easy for us to be very, very good and righteous and, and good of character and follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the best of character uh, during this blessed month of Ramadan, Dr. Zaki. Now we move on to the second part of uh, the show, which is to discuss the discouraged acts. Can you now briefly outline the discuss the discouraged acts during fasting during the month of Ramadan? The acts which are discouraged during fasting can be divided into three categories. The first is acts that are discouraged, which are contrary to the sunnah of fasting. Number two, acts which are discouraged during the month of Ramadan, which are otherwise also prohibited. Number three, the other acts which are discouraged during the month of Ramadan. So brothers and sisters, tomorrow we will be discussing acts recommended and discouraged was fasting part two. Join us then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. يومنا صبر ورق بدموع البائسين رمضان قد أهل بالصيام وأقل مصعدا أهلا وخلا لتهو في كل بيت A friendly message by Dr. Zakir Win over your enemy In this age of hatred and animosity our all loving creator has prescribed the formula for winning over your enemy in the glorious Quran, in Surah Fusilat, chapter 41, verse number 34. Nor can goodness and evil be equal. Repel evil with what is better. You will see that he with whom you had enmity will become your close friend. Do not defeat your enemies, but rather win them over. Win their hearts and win their minds. Peace TV. The solution for humanity.